Words, my words, they seem simple, right? They're just sounds we make strung together or letters we write or type and sort of like, um, but they hold immense power to unite uh, or divide. They can build empires, spark revolutions, break hearts uh, and glue them back together. They can also be used for far less noble purposes. Politicians, public figures, corporations, even your teachers. They all know the power of language to manipulate, to mislead, and sadly, to maintain the status quo. Think about it. How often have you seen a billionaire or renowned scientist vow to bring change only to abandon that promise once they've secured their profit? How many times have you seen a company advertise a product as life-changing only to find out it's just a slightly shinier version of the old thing? Words, my friends, can be weapons of mass distraction. This is the reality of the planned obsolescence of language. Words that are made to break. They can be buzzwords and slogans waved in our faces, diverting our attention from the real issues. But here's the good news. We're not powerless against this linguistic manipulation. Of course, we are only a very small group of people. By recognizing how language can be manipulated to deceive, we can become more discerning listeners and critical thinkers. Ultimately, we also learn the art of staying silent in the presence of meaningless chatter. We can start to see through the smoke and mirrors of empty rhetoric and demand real action, real change inside us. Because words without action are just, well, they're just noise. Even if the change is internal, you don't need to change others. Focus on changing yourself first and the world will follow, hopefully. Let's talk about stalling tactics, the bread and butter of those who benefit from inaction. Politicians are masters at this. They'll form committees, launch investigations and promise comprehensive reviews. All this sounds very official, very important, but what are they actually doing buying time? These linguistic gymnastics are designed to create the illusion of progress while avoiding any real meaningful change. It's like giving a starving man a menu instead of a meal. Sure, the menu has pictures of delicious food, descriptions that make your mouth water, but it won't fill your stomach. And all those promises of action, they're just empty calories. The problem is this tactic often works. People see the wheels turning, hear the official sounding words and think, well, at least they're doing something, but are they? Or are they just kicking the can down the road, hoping the problem will magically solve itself? Or better yet, that we'll just forget about it entirely. Don't fall for it. Demand action, not words. Remember playing telephone as a kid? You whisper a phrase in someone's ear, it gets passed around, and by the end, it's something completely different. Misinformation works the same way. A story starts somewhere, maybe with a grain of truth, but as it gets shared and reshared, it morphs and mutates. By the time it reaches you, it's a Frankenstein's monster of half-truths, distortions and outright lies. And let's not forget the modern-day whisperers' social media algorithms. These digital puppet masters feed us a steady diet of information tailored to confirm our existing biases, creating echo chambers where misinformation thrives. It's like being trapped in a giant game of telephone, except the stakes are much higher than just a silly phrase. So how do we fight back against this tidal wave of misinformation? First, be skeptical. Don't believe everything you read, especially if it confirms what you already believe. Second, check your sources. Is the information coming from a reputable source or some random person with a Twitter account? Third, think critically. Does the story make sense? Is there evidence to support it? Remember, in the age of information overload, critical thinking is our most valuable weapon. Section four, big groups, big lies, trust erodes in the crowd. Here's a fun fact. The bigger the group, the easier it is to spread lies. It's all about trust. In small groups, we know each other. We have shared experiences, a shared history. This builds trust, which means we don't need a lot of fancy words to convince each other of something. We can cut through the BS and get to the heart of the matter. But in large groups, that trust erodes. We don't know everyone personally, so we rely on other cues to decide who to trust. Authority figures, social status, the number of likes on a post. This makes us vulnerable to manipulation because those in positions of power can exploit that trust deficit. They can use their platform to spread misinformation knowing that their words carry weight simply because of who they are, not because of the validity of their claims. Think about it, this is how propaganda works. It thrives in environments where critical thinking is suppressed and blind obedience is rewarded. 
So how do we combat this? By fostering a culture of critical thinking, even especially when it comes to those in positions of power. Question everything, demand evidence, and don't be afraid to call out BS when you see it. Section five, small circles, stronger bonds, trust through shared experience. Now let's talk about the power of small groups. These are the places where trust is built through shared experiences, not empty rhetoric. It's your family, your friends, your community. In these intimate settings, words matter less because actions speak louder. Think about the times you felt truly understood, truly supported. Was it because someone gave you a perfectly crafted speech? Or was it because they showed up for you day in and day out? with their actions, their presence, their willingness to listen without judgment. In small groups, we learn to read each other's cues, to understand the nuances of communication that go beyond words. We develop a shared language, a shorthand that allows us to communicate complex ideas with a look, a gesture, a knowing nod. This kind of intimacy, this depth of understanding, is a powerful antidote to the manipulation and deceit that often plague larger groups. Section six, beyond empty promises, wisdom in action, not words. So what's the takeaway? Words are powerful tools. They can be used to deceive, to manipulate, to maintain the status quo, but they can also be used to inspire, to empower, to create positive change. The key is to be discerning listeners, to think critically and to demand action, not just empty promises. True wisdom, my friends, is not found in the eloquence of our words, but in the integrity of our actions. It's not about talking a good game, but about showing up and doing the work, even when it's hard, even when it's uncomfortable, even when no one is watching. Because in the end, it's not the words we speak, but the lives we live that truly matter. Our lives together with people close to us.